Hello, and welcome to part two in our study on the Holy Spirit. In this lesson, we are going to begin to look at the personality of the Holy Spirit. A purpose, again, of looking at the personality of the Holy Spirit is to show that He is an actual person, that the Holy Spirit is a person. That's what we mean by talking about the personality of the Holy Spirit. We are attempting to show, we are going to show, that He has the attributes of a person. The attributes of a person, a person is intelligence, having their own intelligence, emotions, having their own will, a self-will, and self-awareness, aware of who they are. These are all what make up a, uh, help to make up a person. And this distinguishes them because, remember we said in our introduction, uh, that there's some groups of people that look at the Holy Spirit as more as an energy, an energy that emanates from God or some type of force, some simple type of power that moves, but not actually a conscious living being. So we're going to look at and show that the Holy Spirit possesses the attributes of a personality and therefore is a living being. So, and again, we, we, we want to emphasize here that why this is important to understand is because we also want to look at the Trinity later on, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Now when we begin with this, sometimes it's difficult to think of, not if you study the scriptures, but if you just have a general picture of the Holy Spirit, it's a little more difficult to think of uh, the Holy Spirit as a person, as an individual, because he can come across as being a bit more impersonal. Uh, and, the, and that's not to, to say that the Holy Spirit's doing something wrong, but the things that are attributed to him and the things that he doesn't seem to possess. When we talk about God the Father, we see communication going on with God the Father. We see the Father talking to the Son. We see the Father talking to people. Uh, God the Father was walking in the garden and talking to Adam and Eve. Uh, so that we could see visible things there. Uh, having conversations taking place that make it easier for us to understand that uh, God the Father is a, has personality. I want to say that he's a person. Certainly when you come to Jesus Christ, uh, because of the incarnation, because Christ uh, physically walked this earth, it's uh, nigh unto impossible to not recognize the personality of Jesus Christ. But the actions and the workings of the Holy Spirit are oftentimes intangible, not things that we can kind of reach out and touch. So it's easy to uh, perceive the Holy Spirit as being more of an influence or a force or a power rather than uh, 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 having a an actual personality. Some of the symbols that are used for the Holy Spirit. Uh, we mentioned them a little bit in the beginning, uh, but breath, we're going to be looking at these and breaking them down. But it's referred to oftentimes as breath, as wind, as power, as oil, as fire, as water. Now, if these are the only things you know of the Holy Spirit, see, that doesn't uh, paint the picture of having a personality. It's like with Jesus Christ. In, in the scriptures, he's referred to as the door. Now, if that's all he was referred to, and we didn't have the incarnation, it would be more difficult to think of the personality of Jesus Christ. He says, I'm the vine, you're the branches. Well, if you just look at being a vine, or you look at being a door, you understand what I'm saying? So there's a lot of symbolism with the Holy Spirit. But if we really look at the scriptures, which we're going to do right now, we, can, we're, we are going to see very clearly, very clearly, that the Holy Spirit possesses the attributes of a person, of having a personality. Let's break them down individually. First, the Holy Spirit has intelligence. The Holy Spirit has intelligence. Going to be a lot of scripture here, so uh, get ready to write or go back and listen to it again. 1 Corinthians 2, 11 and 10. But God has revealed them to us through His Spirit. Now he's talking about the Holy Spirit here. For the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of a man except the Spirit of the man which is in him? 
Even so, no one knows the things of God except the Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit knows the things of God, knows the deep things of God. That shows intelligence. Isaiah 11, verses 1 and 2. There shall come forth a rod from the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of its roots. The Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. Now listen to the description here. And this is the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of wisdom and of understanding. The Spirit of counsel and might. The Spirit of knowledge and of fear of the Lord. So you see the attributes that he possesses there, all in the category of intelligence. Romans 8 verses 26 and 27. Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses, for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Now he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is, because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. So now you see the Holy Spirit making intercession in our prayers when we're praying and we're not quite sure what to pray for or how to pray. What a blessing. The indwelling Holy Spirit now prays for us. He brings those prayers and the words that we can't come up with, the right words to think of. He brings them to the Lord. That takes intelligence. A force or an energy does not do that. So you put these together, what we've looked at, and what do we see that the Holy Spirit has in the realm of intelligence? One, he searches all things. Two, he searches even the deep things of God. Not just general knowledge, he knows the deep things of God. He knows the things of God which no man knows. So he searches these things, he knows them. He has wisdom, he has understanding, he counsels, he has knowledge, he gives revelation of God's will, and he makes intercession for us. These are all clear characteristics of an intelligent being. So number two, looking at uh, what makes up constitutes a person, a personality. The Holy Spirit has emotions. The Holy Spirit has emotions. Ephesians 4, 30. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you are sealed for the day of redemption. It is possible to grieve the Holy Spirit. Now you don't grieve a force. You don't grieve an energy. You can grieve a person. Someone with a personality. Isaiah 63.10 But they rebelled and grieved his Holy Spirit. So he turned himself against them as an enemy, and he fought against them. Once again, the grieving. Romans 5.5 5. Now hope does not disappoint, because the love of God, the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Romans 15.30 now I beg you, brethren, through the Lord Jesus Christ and through the love of the Spirit that you strive together with me in prayers to God for me. So we see two emotions here. The Holy Spirit can be grieved and the Holy Spirit has love. The Holy Spirit pours out love in our hearts. These, again, are attributes of a personality. Number three, number three, the Holy Spirit has a will. The Holy Spirit can if you, he makes decisions. Number one, he distributes gifts to the body of Christ according to his will, according to how he wants to do it. 1 Corinthians 12, verses 7 through 11. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit. See, it's the Holy Spirit doing this. The Holy Spirit's giving these gifts. So to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, to another the word of knowledge through the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healings by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another different kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. But one and the same Spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually as 
he wills. So the Holy Spirit gives these gifts, and he gives them according to his own will. He divides them and delegates them as he desires to do it. He directs people where to go. And I'm just, I'm just giving you one or two examples here. Acts 16, verses 6 through 10. Now when they had gone through Phrygia and the region of Galatia, they were forbidden by the Holy Spirit to preach the word in Asia. Now you see, he's directing the disciples. He's telling them where to go, where they're traveling. And then he told them, don't go to Asia. I don't want you to go there right now. So that's his will. He's directing them. I want you to go here. Don't go there. And as you read on through this passage, he talks about where he permitted them to go and where he did not permit them to go. So we see clearly here that the Holy Spirit is seen exercising his will in the giving out of gifts and guiding and directing people. Here are some additional characteristics that show that the Holy Spirit is a person and has a personality. One, he speaks and he hears. He speaks and he hears. John 16, 13. However, when the Spirit of truth has come, that's the Holy Spirit, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will tell you things to come. Matthew 10, 19 and 20. But when they deliver you up, do not worry about how or what you should speak. For it will be given to you in that hour what you should speak. For it is not you who speak, but the Spirit of your Father who speaks in you. Again, here's guiding, here's directing, here's giving people words to say, bringing things to their remembrance. He's telling them here that when they come and, they, and they're going to prosecute you, if you will, and they're going to ask for answers, don't worry about what you're going to say. The Holy Spirit will speak through you. The Holy Spirit will give you the words to say. He teaches the Holy Spirit teaches. Again, remember, I'm trying to show here that these are not acts of energies or forces or impersonal beings. These are all things to show that the Holy Spirit is a conscious being with a personality. He teaches. John 14, 26. But the Comforter or the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. 1 John 2.27 But the anointing which you have received from him abides in you, and you do not need that anyone teach you. But as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things, and is true and is not a lie, and just as it has taught you, you will abide in him. The Holy Spirit anoints and the Holy Spirit teaches. One more, 1 Corinthians 2.13. These things we also speak, not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Number four, I'm listing them, number three, I think. And he guides us. The Holy Spirit guides us. John, we just looked at that a little bit, but let me give you this one here again. John 16, 13. However, when he, the Spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak in his own authority, but whatever he hears. We just read that verse. So here you see he's guiding. Romans 8, 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. The Holy Spirit guides, the Holy Spirit leads. He testifies, the Holy Spirit testifies, or he witnesses. John 15, 26. But when the Helper comes, whom I shall send to you in the Father's name, the Spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, he will testify of me. He will testify of me. He convicts of sin. Kind of thinking as we grocery list this, that did do you really realize that the Holy Spirit's doing all of these things? That's why I told you this is an interesting, very interesting study. He convicts of sin, John 16, 8. And when he has come, he will convict the world of sin 
and of righteousness and of judgment. He performs miracles. Acts 8.39 Now when they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught Philip away, so that the eunuch saw him no more, and he went on his way rejoicing. Here was Philip there, and here was the eunuch, and when he came up out of the water, the Holy just, Spirit just took Philip and went, whoosh, gone. <coughs> He's gone. He just vanished in front of him. He intercedes. We read this one before where he intercedes in our prayers. He, 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 as we pray and we don't know what to pray for, uh, I repeated it here, but he's uh, interceding. He, he brings the prayers that with the groanings and the words that we don't, do not know. And let me just read it here. Likewise, the Spirit also helps our weaknesses. For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself makes intercession. He intercedes for us with groanings which we cannot be uttered. He fellowships with us. He fellowships. 2 Corinthians 13, 14. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. It's kind of like a benediction. But look at the three things that are there. And the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit. There's your trinity. And there you see three different things taking place, but we can have communion. We can have communion, fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Again, you can't do that with an energy. You can't do that with an unconscious force. The Holy Spirit is a person. He can be resisted. The Holy Spirit can be resisted. Acts 7.51 you stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears. You always resist the Holy Spirit as your fathers did, so do you. To resist means to stand against, to oppose. You don't oppose against a force. You oppose a person. You oppose a conscious person. He can be lied to. Again, this is showing personality here. He can be lied to, Acts 5.3. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and to keep back part of a piece of the land for yourself? You have lied to the Holy Spirit. And God judged him for them. He can be quenched. The Holy Spirit can be quenched. 1 Thessalonians 5.19. Very simple. Do not quench the Spirit. To quench it means to hinder. To hinder or to try to, uh, to hinder the operation of. That's what quenching is. And last one I'll give you. He can be blasphemed. He can be blasphemed. Matthew 12, 31 and 32. Therefore I say to you, every sin and every blasphemy will be forgiven men. But the blasphemy against the Spirit, that's the Holy Spirit, will not be forgiven men. Anyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whoever speaks against the Holy Spirit, it will not be forgiven him, neither in this age nor in the age to come. There's a lot of verses there, but that's just crystal clear. It's crystal clear that that paints a picture. That you're looking at a being here who thinks who feels, who acts, who makes decisions in every capacity. These are not the things that are done by an impersonal force, but they're done by a living being. The Holy Spirit has a personality. He is someone that we can communicate with. He communicates to us and we communicate to him. I trust this has helped just establish this for you. Uh, what we're going to do next is we're going to move on to the deity, the deity of the Holy Spirit. I think what I'll do is I'll stop right there. It might make more lessons, more numbers that we have to go to, but if I can keep the topics separated on each uh, lesson that I present, I think it might make it a little more easy to follow. So I trust that's helped with you in cementing in your mind that the Holy Spirit is a living being, a personality, again, that we can talk to, that we can communicate with, and that communicates with us. Next, we're going to look at this person, this being, is actually part of the Godhead, the deity of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for watching, and Lord bless you.